I'm Greg Brown for Newsmax TV Money. In the studio with me today is David Frazier, editor of the ETF Strategist. David, we've been watching all morning the testimony on Capitol Hill, and I was wondering what your initial reactions to, to what we're hearing uh, might be. My initial reaction is I want to throw up. I'm disgusted. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of so-called experts uh, claiming now uh, that U.S. taxpayers should spend $700 billion to bail out financial institutions. Let's talk about these experts. We have Henry Paulson, who actually said a few days ago he didn't realize that uh, government regulation of the securities markets was so bad. Henry Paulson, this supposedly brilliant person uh, that was previously at Goldman Sachs, who, by the way, benefited tremendously uh, from the uh, subprime uh, mortgage meltdown that we're now seeing. We have uh, Ben Bernanke uh, telling people today that uh, by dramatically increasing the money supply once again, that is by spending this $700 billion, and how's it going to be spent? Is, you know, loans are going to be made. M the money supply is going to need to be dramatically increased. The uh, budget deficit's going to go to probably over a trillion dollars. Telling people today that there won't be any inflationary repercussions, that this won't affect inflation at all. What kind of nonsense is this? You know, here's the same person, this learned professor, last October or November, I'm not sure exactly when, uh, told uh, the world in some con congressional uh, testimony that at that time, increasing the money supply and cutting interest rates wouldn't cause inflation. Who is this person? Why do we listen to these people? Then we have people like um, Chuck Sumer, the senator from New York today, um, saying that he's been speaking with uh, uh, people in the auto industry and those persons have been telling him that uh, the government needs to do something because there's, um, you know, they're not able to sell cars. And he said specifically, uh, Schumer said, that the automakers were telling him that they're not able to sell cars because a lot of people that have poor credit scores can't get loans. So now we're supposed to give loans to people once again who can't afford to pay them back. Then we have a congressman from, let's see, I have a note here, I don't recall who it was, Elijah Cummings from a, a Maryland congressman uh, saying today, literally, quote, the housing bubble appears to have burst. The housing bubble burst two years ago, okay? These guys are, are the, if we're supposed to trust these people now, let me continue, if I may. We have presidential candidate Barack Obama wants to spend $130 billion per year over the next 10 years in new government spending programs. Okay, where does he think the money's going to come from? Okay, we have uh, the other primary candidate, John McCain, saying that he wants to form a 9-11 style commission to, to figure out what caused this mess. He doesn't know yet. Okay, I could go on and on and on. Then we have persons like Jim Cramer, the brilliant Jim Cramer, okay, who told people on July 9th, I think it was, mid-July, get out of stock, sell everything, okay? This was when the market was very, very near a low, okay? Sell everything. A week later, he said, buy, buy, buy. And then again, two days later, he's told people to get out of stocks again. Why do we continue to listen to these people? now? I don't claim to have the answers. I, I don't know what the answer is. But why in the world should we entrust these people who have been repeatedly wrong over and over and over for the past 12 months to why should we entrust them to make the decisions here? This is insane. Now, let me get something out of the way real quick before we continue. By the way, unlike Jim Cramer, I'm not being hurt by this. I'm actually making money in the market right now. Subscribers to my newsletter, the ETF Strategist, we're making money right now, okay? We've been short uh, some, so, uh, an ETF in the consumer sector. Uh, went short about three weeks ago. We're not actually short. It's an inverse traded fund. It's up significantly in the past two weeks. We're not going to, I'm not going to get hurt by this. So I'm not upset because of how this may hurt me personally. It won't. But I am very, very upset, and it's, it's really discouraging that we're supposed to listen to these people. Uh, David, I was watching the news this morning, and uh, Warren Buffett's in buying, buying big in Goldman Sachs, and he says he supports the bailout. 
What do you think of that? <laughs> of course he supports the bailout. Goldman Sachs will benefit from this. Any bad assets that they have on their balance sheets will now be b bought up by everyday taxpayers. And what happens to Warren Buffett? Do you know, here's his agreement. His agreement was he invested $5 billion in the company for a 10% annual dividend. But we don't stop there. He can buy Goldman Sachs stock anytime in the next five years, anytime at $115 a share. Just yesterday, before this agreement was made, Goldman was paying at $125 a share. In other words, it already beat, been beaten down to ridiculous levels. He's going to benefit dramatically. Of course he supports this. I'm not trying to say anything bad about Warren Buffett, but at least at least tell the truth. You know, we hear all of this that if this doesn't go through, the economy is going to go into a tailspin. That may be the case. I don't know. But what I do know is this. The government has already wasted so much money over the past year, and the economy hasn't improved any. And I've been telling people for the past year that all of this was going to happen. Here's what's going to happen if the bailout does go through. Okay, banks aren't going to go ahead and start lending money. Gee, I just covered some, some losses and all of a sudden I'm going to start lending again? Of course that's not going to happen. The federal budget deficit is going to swell. Long-term borrowing costs are going up. In other words, this is not going to solve the root cause, and that's the housing slump. The housing slump is going to continue. Home prices are going to continue to go down. Consumers are going to cut back on their spending. And businesses are going to stop investing. They're going to cut their workforce more. So no matter what, things are going to be bad. Can, can you make money in this market? That's what of I course you can make money, but you got to be very, very cautious here because we don't know that what this insane, quote, government of ours is going to do. And there's going to be these perceptions because all these supposed experts are going to tell people how this is a good thing. So we'll probably get stock prices rally for maybe a few days and possibly a couple of weeks. But from there, if that were to happen, I can tell you what I'm going to be doing if stocks do rally. I will be personally aggressively going short the market and recommending some inverse uh, ETF uh, uh, funds. Um, other than going short, really the smartest thing to do here for most people is this is a time just to sit in cash and be patient. All right. I thank you for your time. Thanks for talking with us. Uh, this has been David Frazier, editor of the ETF Strategist, and I'm Greg Brown for Newsmax TV Money.